Hello, hi, my name is Kapil Upadhyay and you are watching Vision Automation Solution. Today's topic is introduction to Arduino. Before moving to Arduino, we should know about embedded systems and microcontroller, microprocessor and what are their differences. So, our first topic is embedded systems. Embedded system uh, is a microprocessor or more precisely I can say is a microcontroller based system of hardware and software which is designed to perform dedicated functions within a large mechanical or electrical system. As you can see in this uh, in this figure, this is an environment that is, uh, this is a control process that consists of sensor, controlling software, display, actuator, operator clock and it is connected not directly to the environment we get to know that uh, what is the definition of an embedded system but we should know what is actually a embedded system is so at the core or i can say in a layman language at the bottom at the initial stage uh, it is an integrated circuit design uh, to carry out computation on uh, for real life operations complexity range from a single microcontroller to a suite of processor with connected peripheral and network from no user interface to complex graphical user interfaces uh, the complexity of an uh, embedded system varies significantly uh, depending on the task for which it is designed precisely. For example, uh, embedded systems application range uh, from digital watches to microcontroller and uh, and in current scenario we have hybrid vehicles. Uh, around 98% of all microprocessor manufactured are used in an embedded systems. Moving on to the structure as we have seen in the diagram, uh, it basically divided in four parts sensor, AD converter, DA converter and actuator. Sensor, uh, the sensor measures and convert the physical quality to si uh, electrical signal uh, which can then be read by embedded system engineer which can then be read by embedded system engineer or any uh, or an, any electrical instrument. A sensor stored the measured quality to the memory. What uh, What is an AD converter? Uh, an analog to digital converter converts the analog signal sent by the sensor into a digital signal. AD, AD converter consists of a processor. Uh, processor access the data to measure the output and store it to the memory. Now moving on to the DA converter as its name said digital to analog converter. It changes the, uh, it changes the digital uh, data fed by the processor to the analog data. Means AD converter gets the signal from the sensor and convert it into a digital signal then while process after processing digital signal then converted into analog signal uh, analog data so that any actuator can work now there is a keyword actuator an actuator compares the output uh, given by the DA converter to the actual output stored and stores the approved output Let's go for the story mode because we are going for history of embedded systems. Uh, the first, uh, the very first model for real-time embedded computing uh, was the Apollo guidance computer uh, developed in the 1960s by Dr. Charles Stark Draper uh, at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology for Apollo program, uh, that space program. Uh, yeah, the computer, the Apollo Gudens computer was designed to collect data automatically and provide mission crit uh, and provide mission critical calculation for the Apollo command. The microcontroller based embedded systems would go on to be incorporated into every aspect of consumers daily lives from credit card readers, uh, cell phones, traffic light, thermostats and etc. There are, there are plenty of example that you can see in day to day life. As I have told you previously that around 98% of technology is based on embedded systems. So uh, our future is so bright in, in this industry. Uh, the industry of an embedded system is expecting to be uh, continuing growing rapidly driven by the continued development of artificial intelligence, virtual reality and uh, augmented reality that is AR, I, AI and VR. Uh, machine learning, ML, deep learning, uh, or we, or I can say, uh, neural networks that consist of deep learning, and the most popular word that we 
all go through is internet of things actually there is a variation in embedded system uh, that is called the cognitive embedded system uh, the co uh, the cognitive embedded system will be the heart of such trends as uh, reduce energy consumption uh, improve security for embedded devices uh, cloud connectivity and uh, uh, mesh networking uh, mesh networking is an example of uh, interconnectivity deep learning application visualization tool and real life and real life data uh, we don't have a present report scenario because of covid uh, the last report was held in two, uh, 2018 and that was published by uh, qy research the global market uh, for the embedded system industry was valued about uh, uh, 68.9 that we can say 69 billion and it was expecting to be 105.7 billion by the end of 2025 now moving on to our next topic that is microprocessor and a microcontroller let's get some glimpse of what is microprocessor a microprocessor is a computer processor within the data processing logic and controls is included on a single integrated circuit or a small number of integrated circuits um, the microprocessor contains the arithmetics logic and controlling circuit required to perform functions of a computer's central processing unit that is CPU. Now let's talk about what is a microcontroller. See a microcontroller is a compact integrated circuit designed to a govern a specific operation in an embedded system. A typical microcontroller includes a processor, a memory, input output peripherals and a single chip on a single chip board or we can say single chip circuit. One of the main difference between a microcontroller and a microprocessor is that a microprocessor will typically run on an operating system. An operating system allow multiple processor to run at the same time via multiple threads. Drivers are required to support peripherals. Microprocessor act as a heart of a computer system while a microcontroller act as a heart of embedded system. Now moving on to our next thing what is arduino let's go for the introduction arduino uno or we can say simply arduino is a type of arduino board that is provided as an open source board that uses an atmega 328p microcontroller in the board the arduino contains a set of analog and a digital pins uh, that are input and output pins uh, which are used to connect the board to other components like sensor and other shields arduino shields there are total 14 input output pins in which six are analog input pins the board has a usb connection the board is used for electronic projects and used to design the circuits it is categorized as a microcontroller that uses the atmega328 uh, as a controller uh, the arduino board is uh, used for electronic projects and mostly preferred by the beginners you can see the what are its type we have Uno, Mega, LiPad, Arduino BT, Arduino Nano, Arduino Mini. Uno, Mega, Mini and Nano is just some more pins or less pins. But the functionality all over the period is same. Talking about LiliPad, LiliPad is used on clothes. I have used this personally for making a gesture car and the gesture car is controlled by my hand gesture and uh, I mount this lily pad on my hand that is bluetoothly connected to, uh, to my Arduino with a bluetooth receiver and a transmitter. Arduino BT, BT stands for bluetooth, uh, is a microcontroller board based on the Atmega 168 and the Blue Giga WT11 bluetooth module. It contains everything that is needed to support the microcontroller and it can be programmed wirelessly uh, over the Bluetooth connection. Means in all these types, we, we are needing a physical connection like USB cable but to program them. But in this, we don't need any physical connection. We can connect this Bluetoothly and program it and upload it via Bluetooth connectivity. But the main question that occurs that why all beginners use Arduino Uno as their first microcontroller? 
why don't we use my uh, arduino mini or a- any other microcontroller this is an interview based question that why are you using my uh, microcontroller that is arduino uno why you are using uno series so i have a lot of reason that why we should use being a beginner arduino uno the very first reason is uh, is that as the board can easily be connected to the other computer via usb cable the usb port fixed in the board uh, serves two purposes it can be used to supply the power and it can act as a serial device to connect the board to the computer system and the second reason that i have is the board is capable to get the power supply from dc adapter having a voltage of 12 volts and uh, the board can be charged uh, from the external power supplies also the microcontroller that we are using it's at mega 3 to 8 like that ic you can see there's a microcontroller that we are using if if it get burns or anything else we can just simply plug it out replace it with another fresh at mega 3 to 8 microcontroller fourth reason i have is the board pins are capable of function for constant power supply of 5 volt the digital and analog pins are used to adjust the voltage supply in the board the fifth reason is that uh, as the board design is simple and uh, it is very user friendly we use arduino mega for our big projects like if we need to connect 70 sensors we are going to use mega uh, in mini or in nano if we want to make our pro- project very compact and uh, and not bulky if we want to fit microcontrollers in a small space we use them now let's talk about how we can connect our arduino to the sensor there are only Uh, there are basically three ways to connect our arduino to the sensor the very first one is uart i2c and spi uart stands for universal asynchronous reception and transmission uh, it is a simple serial communication protocol that allows the host that is our arduino to communicate with serial devices uart supports both directional or we can say bidirectional asynchronized and serial data transmission it uses data line that is tx and rt as you can see in our pin and it is predefined in the arduino uno that pin number 1 is tx that is transmission and the pin number 0 is receiver that is rx they are both connected to device uh, for example usb on arduino and computer uart is found on all types of board which allows the arduino to communicate with a computer due to onboard usb to serial converter now moving on to the second one that is i2c arduino uh, it is stands for inter integrated circuits i2c i2c is, is nothing just i square c i i c inter integrated circuits it is a serial communication interface designed for microcontroller uh, if we compare to uart it is simpler but i2c is not used for pcs personal computers dev- uh, devices communication but are used for your modules and sensor uh, it is simple bidirectional two wire synchronized serial bus and use only two wires that is sda and scl to transmit information between devices connected to the bus they would sometime require many different parts for example sensor expansion drivers working together with i2c you can connect up to 128 devices on the main board while maintaining a clear communication pathway between the master that is arduino and the slave that is our sensor or we can say module device and the last but not least spi which is stands for serial peripheral interface it is similar to i2c where it is a difference form of serial communication protocol specially designed for microcontroller to connect spi uh, spi operates at full duplex where data can be sent and received simultaneously it means compared to uart and i2c it is faster and uh, 
it is it is faster communication peripheral with a 8 megabits or more data transmission rate uh, see it is typically faster due to a simple protocol that is data slash clock lines and share between devices and uh, each device will require a unique address wire spi is used in places where speed is important like sd cards display modules or where we want our data to be real time however uh, uh, spi can only be used for single master device which is arduino with a maximum four slave devices now let's winding up this video because it's getting too long we have our course content the very first topic is basics of embedded systems second one is basic of arduino introduction to ics arduino installation uh, arduino communication peripheral and its configuration and the last one is project because doing project is very more important than any theoretical classes because practical implementation is nowadays very important and it enhance your skill we'll see some of our projects that uh, we let's see some of our arduino iot projects that we make arduino robot ka that uh, that is the most basic beginning thing that we uses home automation this is very big project temperature and humidity monitor arduino rfid door lock automated plant watering system smart dustbin smart stick for blind smart barricade system and smart parking system if you guys like our video please give a thumbs up and subscribe to our youtube channel that is vast automation and don't forget to press that bell icon so you can't miss any of our video till then peace